It's the 30th anniversary of Super Metroid. But why should us Sega fans care about that? We should care because there's a brand new indie title in development that's been heavily inspired by Super Metroid. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Super Metroid is celebrating its 30th anniversary in the next few weeks, and it's considered one of the best games ever created, inspiring an entire genre of games. It scored an average of 9.5 back in the day and had stunning graphics, an amazing soundtrack, and groundbreaking level design. Unfortunately, being a Nintendo IP, us Sega fans never got this game on our Mega Drive and Genesis until this year. A small team started porting over Super Metroid in 2023 and in 2024 turned this port into a brand new game influenced by Super Metroid. So finally, after 30 years, Sega's 16-bit fans may be getting a game to rival the Nintendo Classic. The game has some huge potential and some big boots to fill. So let's jump into the demo and see what the team created so far. Space Hunter. Now this game started off as being Super Metroid, a port from the Super Nintendo game to the Mega Drive, is my understanding uh, of the game. Which is not unusual that games that start off as ports, especially in the indie scene, end up becoming games by themselves. The original game, or the idea for the original game, acts as a scaffolding to build something else on top of. And let's not forget how litigious Nintendo can be. Let's have a look at Space Hunter. From what I've seen so far, it looks pretty special. Now this is super early, from what I understand. Early, early demo. Not all the logic's in there. Only a bit of the level design is in there. Um, only a bit of the enemy uh, encounters are in there. Same with weapons. So very, very, very early. Um, but with that in mind, let's check this out. Ooh, so you can see the Metroid uh, influence straight away. Um, where they've they've obviously done a reskinning here, but it looks really nice. So uh, let's try and move the character around. Oh, I love that animation. You see that where the the kind of torch or the weapon on her arm kind of like rolls up onto the uh, the top of her forearm there. Really nice animation there, and then the glow from the light as well. So what have we got here? Um, a seems to do diagonal shooting. Uh, B shoots. Oh, look at that. Bullet shells, like that. Uh, C is jump. We've got nice uh, puffs of smoke coming out from the feet there. Down is, oh, double, press down again. And we do the uh, Metroid ball thing. And we can drop the bombs. <laughs> Music's quite cool. So already, for those of you that like your graphics, I think this is going to be a really, really great looking game. Let's, uh, let's play some though. Let's, uh, let's get into the game. So the run's slow. Now I don't know if that changes as you go from levels or if you get uh, power-ups. Obviously it's uh, inspired by Metroid, so maybe you get different um, power-ups. Oh, that's nice. I like to see that. Got some particles there. All right, let's put this guy down here. That's really cool. It's really weird. The, the running's slow, but like the jumping's really nice and responsive, as is the shooting. Again, visually, it's looking nice. Like, if this is early on, uh, then the team have, you know, they've done a great job already. Oh, she's running a lot faster now. So maybe it's because I was outside. That would be quite cool if they're doing, uh, taking into account your environment and where you are. And that affects your kind of uh, traversal through the world. The jump's really nice. Really, really responsive. It's looking good. I mean, it's a little empty. Okay, this looks like it's uh, under under construction, this part of the, uh, of the map. <laughs> 
<laughs> Very nice. Again, when you turn into the boar, super easy. Okay, this, this part of the map looks empty, so I am guessing there's nothing to see here. Yeah, I can't go any further than that. And I cannot get up there. Let's go back and take a look. So again, super early days for this game. Uh, yeah, super early days where, you know, early demo, team trying stuff out, probably building out their tools for map creation. But it's got a huge amount of promise so far. Really, really like the uh, visuals, the controls. The, you know, they've got that three C's character, controls, camera, um, all working quite nicely together. Oops, jumped down. I shouldn't have done that. We've got sound effects on her, collectibles. We've got weapons up here. Can I check? Oh, yes. X changes them. X and Y changes. Do they do anything? Kind of looks the same. I guess they're slightly different. It's like a lasery type one. They kind of look the same at the moment. She's in this alien world just doing her day job there. I like that kind of narrative storytelling in games as well. Okay, so we've got respawn of enemies. Again, I don't know if that's going to be in the final game that these guys are putting together. Let's go along here. Be good. It'd be interesting to see what kind of enemies they're going to have in the final game as well. If this is just um, the base, I imagine this is just the base enemy they've got up and running, and we'll see more uh, more enemies as they develop the game further. Some of the detail in here looks really nice as well. Really nice. There is more to this. I think there is more to this demo. But I got a feeling it's all the same. How do I get through the door? Okay, it's just like Metroid. Shoot it and it opens. Cool. Well, there's a first glance, a first little playthrough uh, of Space Hunters. Let's dig a little bit deeper into it and uh, find out what this game's all about. So this game started off originally as Metroid Mega Mission. But towards the end of 2023, the team pivoted and decided to create their own IP and steer well clear of the Nintendo-owned IP Metroid. Space Hunter is clearly the evolution of the team's original efforts to bring Metroid to the Mega Drive and Genesis, but this has the potential to be so much more. The demo gives very little away, with really just the level layout in place and a few enemies dotted around the level. But if the team can bring modern design principles to the traversal and level structure, we could be on course for another 16-bit AAA title. The graphics are certainly already on this trajectory, with some lovely animation and attention to detail that can lift this game above the rest. I love the weapon rolling up onto the top of the wrist and the torch lighting up the body. That's a really nice touch. The animation is fluid, with only the speed of the running being a sticking point in the demo. The controls are responsive, although the tap to crouch can feel a little awkward when you shoot an enemy after falling off a platform. It feels like a second touch is needed to crouch, which has always caught me out. With the game being in such an early stage of development, it's hard to form an opinion for this preview, but it's easy to see how this initial progress could lead to a very special game for our 16-bit console. Now I've heard that the team are considering a Kickstarter to bring this project to life. And if they do, they can count on my full support. I'd love to see this game have a physical release. And of course, I love the independent scene that's grown up around the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Now, if you enjoy videos like this, love learning about the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive and retro gaming, then why not consider subscribing? You can click on a little button down below this video. And it'd be great if you can support the channel by sharing the video around with those that love the Mega Drive and Genesis and 16-bit gaming. And also jump into the comments below. Let me know what you think about this brand new game 
coming to the Mega Drive and Genesis. That's all for now, but I'll catch you on the next one.